Adri, Sri M. B. Daju Goda, Professor Goda. Sir, I rise in support of the passage of the School of Planning and Architecture Bill 2014. Being the proud husband of an architect, my children's amma, I am aware of what wonderful and creative people architects are. Sir, I'd like to offer some concrete suggestions to enable the SPAs to become more effective. First, sir, faculty related issues. For any educational institution to achieve its potential, it needs motivated, capable students, outstanding teachers, and wonderful infrastructure. But attracting faculty to teaching is not easy, and today, Government regulations are coming in the way of the SPAs attracting the best talent. Let me explain how. Madam, uh, through you, sir, uh, Minister, Madam, the architecture is a field which is a professional field. The rules that apply to professional courses should take into account the context of where knowledge is created. And in architecture, knowledge is created in the field. So if you want to get the best practitioners, who are at the cutting edge of knowledge into the classroom, you have to have the regulations open up the classroom to practitioners. You should change the regulations that come in the way of teachers from taking part in private practice or even institutional and government practice. Today, faculty members are discouraged from engaging in practice, and this must be reversed. Another aspect of faculty, uh, of faculty development in SPS, if this is a profession, as a practice, then a PhD should not necessarily be the requirement for a faculty position. There will be numerous practicing architects who would not have a PhD, but whose knowledge and experience would be more valuable than those with a PhD. And I speak as a PhD myself. I urge the government to bring in more flexibility in its requirements so that outstanding practitioners can be back in the classroom for the SBAs. Two, on the point of urbanization, sir. India is going through rapid urbanization, but this is happening with little planning and vision. Urban designing, urban design is turning out to be the ghastly byproduct of self-interested actions of real estate developers. Green design is becoming a game of certification rather than something that protects the environment. Sustainability and the environment pay the price and so do citizens. It is imperative that SPAs play a more active role in working with urban planning authorities so that our cities grow in a manner that respects their natural ecosystems. It is imperative to integrate large-scale public transport into the cities as they grow. It's imperative to create public spaces that en enable people to interact and play together, spaces which encourage the building up of social capital across communities. It is imperative to ensure that cities proactively plan for migrants to create proper living spaces for construction workers who work and build the structures that they never get to live or work in. We also need the SPAs to help create an urban planning and management cadre of professionals. Those professionals should be integrated into the government and relevant government department professionals should also be sent to the SPAs for mandatory executive education. We also need the SPS to diversify the curriculum to bring in geography, to bring in informatics, economics, development studies, mass communications, to make education in planning and architecture a much more holistic endeavor than it is today. On the issue of smart cities, my colleague Sri Shantaram Naik has already spoken. So I'll move on to the fact that the minister really needs to go beyond the three SPAs that exist today and to create many more such institutions around the country, including in Karnataka. In Karnataka, in Bangalore, we already have the private sector initiating through philanthropy, the Indian Institute of Human Settlements, which is doing cutting edge research on urbanization and engaging with international universities and coming up with programs that are really meaningful to India's evolving uh, context. At the same time, sir, we need the SPAs to pay attention to certain other contexts that we pay less attention to today. We are seeing development in the mountain areas. And whether it's the Northeast or the Himalayas, we need our top institutions to pay attention to uh, building uh, codes, 
to development plans, to design that ensure that those ecosystems are not hurt and that we do not result, do not face natural disasters going forward. Going beyond the mountains, the varied topography of our country offers a huge canvas for innovative architecture, for design and planning that is suited to the context of deserts, forests, coasts, hills, the Western Ghats, and even our island. At the same, same time, sir, we must ensure that disaster management is integrated into the curriculum of these institutions. They have to be at the forefront of disaster planning and work hand in hand with the National Disaster Management Authority to ensure, if not just within those institutions, but even the creation of new institutions need to be brought in because we are facing more and more challenges in the context of climate change. While I talk about urbanization, I do not want to leave my village brethren behind. We have to look uh, at village and local architecture. We need to ensure that our villages incorporate the best of our learnings. We need to ensure that we strengthen our diverse, locally relevant architectural heritage. We should stop aping the West. We should ensure that the SPAs play a leading role in creating built environments where people and nature come alive harmoniously. Sir, India is a country with an extraordinary architectural heritage, unrivaled in the world. From Mohenjo-daro to the Mughal monument, from Kajuraho to Konark to Karnataka's Hampi and Halebid, our parliament house even, India has shown what extraordinary architects we can produce. We have revered architects in Karnataka like Jakarnacharya. Let their example be the inspiration for the SPAs as they embark on their new mission to be institutions of national importance. I wish them the very best and commend this bill to the house for passage. Thank you. Thank you.